Welcome to the Warley Motor Railway Club virtual event featuring club life, the exhibition and the exhibitors. We hope you enjoy this presentation. Hi, Joel with Woodland Scenics. We're really excited to be part of this virtual event to bring the Warley Train Show directly to you. Today we'll feature a compilation of product videos as well as how-tos. First off, modular fences. They're a great way to add character and realism to any scene. Take a look at two videos showcasing the system. You really can't go anywhere without seeing fences. Whether it's a rural, industrial, or residential area, you'll see many types across the landscape. We've made it really simple to add fences to your layout. We have six types to choose from, privacy, log, picket, rail, chain link, and barbed wire. And they all come in N, H, O, and O scale. Each fence is hand painted, weathered, and includes a gate. And every package has enough fence to cover 192 scale feet. Best of all, they're easy to use. With the modular design, they're ready to install straight out of the package. Don't be afraid to mix it up. Picket would be great for residential areas, barbed wire and log for rural country roads, and privacy for industrial parks. For more information about fences and other Woodland Scenics products, visit us at woodlandscenics.com. Hi, I'm Troy with Woodland Scenics. Today I'm going to show you how to install fences on your layout. From train yards to city streets, or rural to industrial scenes, fences are a great way to add character and realism. There are six types of fences available for N, HO, and O scale. Chain link, picket, barbed wire, log, rail, and privacy. I'll be using the rail fence and barbed wire in HO scale for this demonstration. The first thing you need to do is determine how you want your fence laid out and match the pieces accordingly. Simply take a piece without an impost and align it with a piece that has one. Now I'll install this first section of rail fence. Mark where the posts are and drill holes for the placement pins. Now I'll apply glue and set the pins in place. If you need a piece of fence to be shorter, you can cut it with a hobby knife. Simply repeat these steps until the fence is finished. Use this method for all fences except barbed wire. Barbed wire is different from other fence types because wire connects all the posts. As each post is installed, the wires need to be pulled taut before marking and drilling. Repeat these steps until the fence is finished. If you want to make a realistic corner, we have a solution for you. Create a 90 degree angle with the fence, then install two brace posts on either side for more realism. If you want to place a corner in the middle of a wired section, just use a single post and a couple of brace posts. As you can see, fences are easy to install and add character to a variety of scenes. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information on fences and other products, visit woodlandscenics.com and follow us on social media. Due to their ease of installation, fences have been a smash hit in the United States since their release earlier this year. Now, peel and place tufts are a fantastic companion to go with the fences. Let's take a quick look at them. Hi, I'm Joel with Woodland Scenics. When you look at a field, you can see there's a variety of plant life besides just grass. Peel and place tufts allow you to create a variety and texture that's found in nature. They are the perfect companion to the field system because tuft colors blend with existing landscape products. Peel and place tufts are pre-made and have a self-adhesive back so you can place them on your layout directly out of the package. They're available in five types to help model anything from wildflowers to tall grasses. First, there's grass tufts, which are available in light and medium green. They're very versatile and can be added anywhere on your layout. Flowering tufts come in violet and red. Use them to create colorful flower beds or add wildflowers to a rural landscape. 
Seating tufts are available in yellow and brown. Try placing them on a farm or down a gravel road. There's also prairie grass that comes in four varieties, brown tipped, light, medium, and dark green. They're great on all sorts of landscapes, especially along rocky terrain. One of my favorite peel and place tufts are edging strips. Available in light and medium green, edging strips are perfect along fences, by abandoned buildings, or anywhere that's difficult to mow. As you can see, peel and place tufts are a simple way to add diversity to your landscape. For more information on peel and place tufts or our other products, follow us on social media, check us out on YouTube, and of course visit woodlandscenics.com. With thousands of consumers signing up to be notified, the utility system is one of our most highly anticipated releases to date. Let's take a look at how this amazing system can transform your layout. Hi, Joel with Woodland Scenics, and I'm really excited to talk about our utility system, a quick and easy way to add the illusion of working power and communication lines to your layout. Each utility pole is pre-wired, and all products are designed to work together with placement in mind, so there's no guesswork. Simply drill holes, grab the poles, and slide them along the wires for custom placement. It really is that easy. Run double crossbars along railroad tracks to simulate communication lines and place single crossbars down city streets to represent power poles. Then further enhance the realism of the scene by installing the transformer connect set to imitate supplying power to building. The system is available for N, HO, and O scales. Be sure to follow us on social media and for more information visit woodlandscenics.com. Thanks so much for watching. Now let's take a look at another popular product. Shaper Sheet. It's an amazingly unique material that can model all different types of terrain. You simply shape and reshape it to hold any level of detail. This how-to video will give you a look at what you need to know. Hi, I'm Kim with Woodland Scenics, and today I'm going to show you how to use Shaper Sheet. I'm going to show you how to shape your Shaper Sheet so that you can achieve any level of detail, as well as how to apply Shaper Sheet Plaster to give your terrain a strong, hard shell. The materials I'll be using are shaper sheet, and this is 18 inches wide, shaper sheet plaster, some mixing bowls, a plaster brush, a spatula, scenic sprayer with water in it, and a pair of scissors. And when you're dealing with plasters and landscaping materials like this, I would recommend putting something down on your work area to help reduce the cleanup. To start off, I have a roll of 18 inch shaper sheet, and I'll just unroll it, like so. And this seems to be about the length that I need, so I'm going to cut it. Of course, you can cut it to any length you need. Now I'm going to shape the shaper sheet. Because it's strong and pliable, it holds its shape and can be manipulated and reshaped to create any level of detail. Each contour looks very natural. Next, we're going to mix the shaper sheet plaster according to package instructions so we can apply it to the terrain. Shaper Sheet Plaster mechanically bonds with Shaper Sheet, giving it a permanent hard shell and locking the contours in place. I have mixing bowls here with measurements marked on the inside. I'll measure eight fluid ounces of Shaper Sheet Plaster. Now I'm going to slowly add it to three fluid ounces of cold water, which I already have in this bowl. You don't have to follow these measurements exactly. Just make sure you mix roughly a two and a half to one ratio. Okay, now the plaster mix needs to sit for about two minutes to let the water soak. After the two minute wait is up, I need to mix the plaster for about another one to two minutes so the consistency is nice and smooth with no lumps. Okay, moving on, I'm going to spray the shaper sheet with water. This helps the bonding process between the shaper sheet and the plaster. Now you can pour the plaster directly onto the landscape. This plaster has about a 20 minute working time before it starts to set up. You can spread the plaster using a brush. 
If you find that your plaster is too thin, you can always add more plaster to your mixture. Another way to give Shaper Sheet that hard shell is to use plaster cloth. Again, following instructions on the packaging, drag a sheet of plaster cloth through the water and carefully apply it to your Shaper Sheet. We suggest that it be overlapped by about half to help improve the overall strength of your shell. Now that the terrain is made, I need to let it dry for 24 hours. The terrain is dry, so let's add our landscaping. I've shown you how to create strong and permanent terrain using Shaper Sheet and Shaper Sheet Plaster. With Shaper Sheet, you also have the option to landscape directly onto the Shaper Sheet without plaster. Although it won't have a hard shell, as long as it doesn't have to bear any weight other than the landscaping, it will hold its contours very well. I've shown you how to create unique landscaping using our Shaper Sheet with a hard shell and without. Maybe you have a large area and need to combine multiple sheets of Shaper Sheet. I'm going to show you how to splice two pieces together. To do this, you have to peel the Shaper Sheet layers back to expose the sticky side of the sheet. Make sure you peel back both the fiber mesh and gauze backing. It's important to get a hold of both when peeling it back. You only need to pull back about a half an inch to an inch. Place the next sheet on top of the exposed foil like this. Now just cut off the excess mesh. There are countless techniques that can be applied to Shaper Sheet, so don't feel limited to what I've shown you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like more information about our products or you'd like to see more how-to videos, visit us at woodlandscenics.com. Using a variety of trees enhances the look of your layout. This next video gives tips and techniques to achieve superior realism with Woodland Scenics products. Hi, I'm Matt with Woodland Scenics. Now when it comes time to adding trees to your model, it can be a very rewarding experience watching all your hard work come to life. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be talking about trees and I'm going to show you some very simple realism tips that are going to make your trees look their best. Now very few geographic areas are free of trees, so I believe it's important to take the time to see how trees look and live in nature and then to try to reflect that detail into the trees you plan to use. Now the modifications we're going to make today are very subtle, but it's the little details that are going to make the difference. Now all trees are going to have many different features, so I went ahead and selected a variety of species that are going to offer their own unique shapes, uh, foliage types, color, texture, and they're all going to have different heights. Now a few of these are also going to add geographic orientation to my model. Now the first tree I'm going to be placing on the model is this particular tree here. Now, this is a nice dark green deciduous tree. It's got a lot of foliage on it, but as you can see it's a little bit full, so I'm going to take the time uh, to really open this foliage up and make it look a lot more like a tree you would see in nature. I like to see a little bit more aired out and let some of that light through it. Now to do so I'm going to be using a pair of tweezers and it's really just a matter of kind of opening up this foliage a little bit, getting some pockets in there and just really allowing that light to get through there. Now with some of that extra foliage that you may be opening up you can actually tuck that deeper down into the tree itself Now this doesn't take nothing but a few minutes to do, but I think the payoff is definitely worth it versus having a uniform shape of foliage over the limbs. I think it just looks a lot more natural just to kind of open that up and get some air into there. So now I'm going to select a spot on this particular model that's going to really uh, showcase this tree really well. And I think uh, probably somewhere over in this area is going to work just fine. So I'm just going to drop that right into position. Now you can poke this right through your layout. Uh, you know, glue down the uh, armature base that comes with it, whatever works for you is just fine. 
and then position that where people that view your model can see it really well. Okay, now my next tree I'm gonna be using is gonna be a smaller, lighter colored tree. I'm actually choosing this uh, light green tree. And this tree is gonna actually gonna be uh, just perfect on top of my ridge. Now, as you can see, again, this tree has great foliage on it, uh, great coloration to it. Uh, it's gonna add a lot of different highlights to the top of that ridge. But one thing I don't like is it's a little bit too uniform. You know, a tree like this might live in somebody's front yard that's uh, clipped all the time. But in this particular tree living out in the wild, I want it to have a little bit more of a uh, ununiform shape to it. So again, just using my tweezers, I'm gonna be bending these armatures around to give this tree a little bit more of an unsymmetrical shape to it. It's just a matter of getting a hold of the armatures, bending them, pulling them, and just really twisting them around to give that tree more of a wild look to it. Now what I really like about these particular armatures is uh, when you bend these into position, they'll actually hold that position. They don't have any memory to them. Uh, you can actually bend these as many times as you need to get the position you're looking for, and you don't have to worry about them breaking as well. Now one thing about using smaller trees, another tip I can share with you is, is when I'm building a larger layout and you want to force a little perspective, you can actually choose smaller trees and place them in the background. So I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, it really opened up that tree and added a nice, great uh, shape to it. I'm ready to put this in position. I'm just going to actually plant that right on top of my ridge. I don't like to put them on the exact top of the ridge, you know, like lollipops. I kind of want to set them down on that ridge a little bit, so just the foliage is kind of in place on top of that ridge. And you can put as many as you want on there to really add quite a bit of detail to your layout. Now the next species of tree I'm going to be placing on the layout is going to have a clump style foliage to it. Now as you can see, the clump style is going to have a lot more of a denser, uh, more compacted style foliage. And instead of actually spreading it apart like I did with the previous trees, I'm actually going to be pruning it or actually plucking foliage away from the tree to really get some of that air into it. Now the tree again looks pretty good as you can see it here, uh, but I like to be able to see through that and have a little bit more of a transparency to that. So again, using my tweezers, or you can even use some of your fingers on these bigger clumps, you just go ahead and actually remove that right from the tree. Now you can reuse this foliage onto your layout or actually make uh, possibly a smaller tree with that, uh, but you just really want to get some bigger pockets of space inside uh, these limbs. I like to be able to see the armatures a little bit. I like to be able to see daylight all the way through that tree. And so we can start by just using our fingertips, removing some of the excess foliage. Now one thing I've noticed as I pluck some of this uh, foliage away from this tree, I'm noticing the sheen on the actual tree itself, on the armature itself. Now again, when I look out in nature, I don't see a tree reflecting back at me. So I'm just actually gonna take a little bit more time and uh, try to knock some of that sheen back by using a little bit of a paint. Now to do so, I'm going to be using a dry brush technique. Now this particular armature is brown in color. Now I find when I look in nature again that I notice the bark is going to have a little bit more of a gray hue to it. So I like to use a nice flat gray color. Now you can use a neutral color of your choice. I've actually custom blended this paint here. And to actually apply it, I'm going to be applying it onto a brush, using a paper towel to remove the excess, which is going to leave a nice coating of paint on the end of my bristles. Now as I apply that to the bark itself, I'm not actually painting the tree, I'm just actually highlighting the top side of that bark. And what that'll do is actually uh, tone down the sheen on the bark itself, and it'll bring out some of the highlights and some of the cracks and crevices uh, that are modeled right into that armature. Now again, if you're making your own trees, uh, apply this technique over the entire armature, uh, and that way when you see up in these higher areas and through the branches, that'll all be highlighted and ready to go. Very easy step, uh, should do it on all your trees and I think again it's going to pay off in a lot of extra detail on your layout. Now I'm going to pick a nice vegetated area uh, for this tree. Here's a nice spot right here, it's going to have a lot of vegetation below that, nice green plush tree. Kind of get that into position and again this layout's really quickly coming to life. All right, now at this point, I'm actually gonna be mixing up the variety a little bit by adding a group of conifers. Now the conifers tend to live in the wild in uh, rugged uh, terrain, rugged landscaping situation, a lot of rock, a lot of deadfall. So I chose a group of them to uh, actually uh, bring attention to this corner of my model. 
Now these here actually uh, look really good. They're pretty much ready to uh, drop in place. One thing that I'm not real fond of is the actual uh, exposed armature on the bottom of it. Uh, these in the wild tend to go all the way down to the ground. Now if you had this planted in uh, a model situation where you have a house or a landscape yard, these would work just fine. But to get them to look like uh, the look I'm looking for, I'm actually going to be removing that part of the armature and then using that exposed wire to poke that through uh, the top of my model itself. Now I'm going to be placing these with the large ones in the back and then dropping the smaller ones in the front so they don't get lost. Now take note as well, when you're planting your trees, plant them in odd numbers. Placing them in odd numbers is going to look a lot more natural and the focus will be on the actual tree, not the number of trees. I'll pop that last one into position and real quickly, this particular part of the landscaping has a really, uh, just a real rugged, real detailed look to it. I really like it. All right, now moving on from the conifers, I'm going to be selecting a nice big green oak tree. Now this tree is a really nice tree, it's got a lot of detail to it, and I really like the color of it, but one thing about the medium green foliage, sometimes it has a tendency to actually blend in with your existing landscaping on your model. So what are we going to do about it? We're actually going to bring out the contrast of this tree by adding some darker colors to it and some lighter colors. Now to do that, I'm actually going to be using some fine turf. I'm going to add a light coating of scenic cement first. And using a soiled colored fine turf, I'm actually going to be uh, adding shadows to the bottom side of this tree. Just sprinkle that underneath the uh, foliage and on the trunks and on your limbs. And then that tree is actually ready to plant at that point. Now I'm going to be planting this tree up towards the front of the layout because I love the detail in this tree. And I think this meadow really here is calling for a nice big oak tree. And you get that into position, make sure it's where you want it. And then at that point, you can go back and then add the highlight or the second part of uh, bringing this tree out with a little bit of yellow vine turf. Now this turf goes a long way. It's got a lot of strong color to it. You just want to kiss it almost like a reflection of the sun on the light part of this tree. And this light color working with that darker color will really help bring this green off of your existing landscape. And it really adds a nice detail to it. All right, now moving on to my final tree I'm going to be placing on my model is going to be this nice sycamore tree here. Now this sycamore tree has got a lot of great color to it. Now a tree like this can also establish a geographic orientation. This particular uh, species of tree tends to live by the water and because I have a water feature on my layout, uh, that's where I'm going to be planting it. Now this tree actually needs very little tweaking to get it ready to uh, plant. It's got a lot of light shining through it and that tends to be uh, what I look for uh, and to uh, making a tree look really natural. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now the area I've selected to plant this tree again is over by the water feature, but I'm also going to place it over here in this group of trees to uh, break up the even number and to actually contrast against the color of the trees already in position. So go ahead and drop that right onto your layout. And very quickly it takes on a real natural look. All right, now all of our trees are in place, I'm going to apply a few more final steps before calling this model complete. I like to get up and landscape underneath all my new trees, and that's going to ensure that my trunks are going to meet well with my landscaping, and I also want to apply some deadfall. Now anytime you see a wild area like this, you're going to have quite a bit of deadfall, so you want to take the time to emulate that onto your model as well to add that layer of realism. Now I like to apply deadfall by uh, using some small twigs or a little bit of uh, some stems that's laying around. But I like to age those a little bit by adding some scenic cement followed by some green fine turf to uh, represent uh, moss onto my uh, deadfall. And that's going to age them well and let them sink deep into my landscaping like they've been there for quite a while. Now once I apply both of these tips, I'm going to call this model complete. This concludes our product spotlight. On behalf of Woodland Scenics, thank you for watching. We'd like to wish you the very best in your health and safety. Have a great day and happy modeling.
Thanks for watching this presentation. We would like to thank our sponsors and the exhibitors for supporting this event. If you require further information or useful links, have a look at the video's description. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you when we are back at the NEC on the 27th and 28th of November 2021.